Before we dive into the stories, I need to issue a trigger warning for story numbers one and four, which involve themes of sexual harassment and assault. And also a warning for story number six, which mentions the death of a child. If you wish to avoid stories with these themes, please be aware. Now, moving on. If any of you have a story to share, you can send it to southerncannibal.com. Without further interruptions, let's get into the stories and remember to always stay hungry. My name is Rose, I'm a female, and at the time of this story, I was 18 years old. I lived in Oregon and went on a vacation to Eureka, California with my dad and stepdad. On the first morning in our hotel, I mentioned to my father that I wanted to have breakfast at the buffet. Neither my stepdad nor my dad wanted to join me, so I went alone. I walked to the buffet, got my breakfast, and then headed to the tea and coffee area. That's when I noticed a strange man staring at me as I poured my drink. Shortly after, I decided to return to my room, not thinking much about the man. However, once I got back to my hotel room, I realized that I had forgotten to grab a spoon for my yogurt. So I ventured out of my room one more time to get a spoon. After retrieving it, I started to head back to my room. But I noticed that the same man was now standing at the gym doorway, which was near my room. As I went to turn around and insert my key card, I felt someone come up right behind me. I turned around to see who it was, and to my surprise, it was the same man from before. I asked if he needed anything, because he was just standing there without saying a single word. This is where the situation takes a disturbing turn. Looking at him, Haven points down to his private area, and to my utter disgust, I realized that he had exposed himself. As you can all imagine, this horrified me, and I hurriedly turned away and headed to the hotel laundry room. Fortunately, there was a staff member there, and I recounted everything that had happened, all while crying out of fear. I've been a victim of sexual assault in the past, so this experience was particularly traumatic for me. The staff member accompanied me to the front desk, where they promptly called the police. When the police arrived, they asked me a few questions and reviewed the hallway footage. To my disappointment, one of the officers actually said to me, Welcome to California. You should have kicked him in the balls or thrown your food at him. It felt like the police were essentially useless, and I'm unsure if they ever took any action against the man. I don't know where that man is now, but I sincerely hope he hasn't subjected other women to the same ordeal, and I hope he's facing justice behind bars. This was an incredibly traumatic experience for me and triggered my PTSD, which is never a pleasant experience. Anyway, I want to thank everyone who listened, and I want to remind you all to be vigilant. Now, moving on to another incident. This took place during my senior year of high school on my 18th birthday. So you could say it wasn't a great way to celebrate. I was out late that night with my three friends, John, Tracy, and Zoe. We were at the casino playing slot machines and enjoying everything the casino had to offer. After several hours of fun, we decided to return to our hotel room at the casino. To save money, we had decided to share one room. John and I shared one bed, while Tracy and Zoe shared the other. At around 3.30 in the morning, we were all abruptly awakened by a loud pounding on our hotel room door. It was 3.30 a.m., and there was no way any of us were going to answer the door at that hour. The pounding on the door continued, and Zoe decided to get out of bed to see who it was. She mentioned that there was a man who appeared to be in his 40s 
standing outside. In her bathrobe, she then asked out loud, What do you want, bro? It's 3.30 in the morning. We're trying to sleep. The guy on the other end replied, Hey, it's housekeeping. I looked through the peephole to see the guy and told him, We're doing fine. We don't need anything. It was clear that he wasn't a housekeeper, as he was in a bathrobe, obviously another guest. I even pointed this out, saying, I know you're not a housekeeper. You're a guest in a bathrobe. However, the guy insisted, let me inside, or I'm going to break down the door. That's when Tracy went to the door and warned him that she'd call the front desk if he didn't leave. But the situation escalated when the guy claimed he had a gun and demanded entry threatening to break down the door and harm all of us. John stepped in and said, listen, if you don't get away from our room, I'm calling the police. The guy responded by kicking our door while screaming like a maniac. In a panic, Tracy called the front desk and John called the police. The police arrived within about five minutes, arresting the guy we explained everything that had happened to the police, and they informed us that the guy was wanted for breaking and entering. The guy who tried to break into our room had a terrifying, enraged expression on his face, like an angry demon straight out of hell. The police took the guy away, and he was banned from ever entering that casino or hotel again. We checked out later that morning, and we never returned to that place after that horrifying experience. Now, switching to another incident that happened a couple of years ago when I was living in a hotel with my family, I recall my brother living in the same complex and he had some friends over. One of them said, hey, and this random girl I'd never met chimed in with the same greeting, saying, hey, as well. Then she added, Sorry, I just heard him say your name, so I figured I'd say hi too. It was a bit odd, but I brushed it off. Sometime later, I was outside, trying to... Whether she liked it or not, after my mom and her went back and forth, with the lady becoming increasingly insistent, security finally arrived. My mom opened the door and pointed to her, but she still refused to budge and even flipped off the security personnel. What finally made her leave was when the guard mentioned that if she didn't leave my room, the police would be notified. She went pale and freaked out, literally throwing herself at the guard's feet and screaming, no, don't call the cops. I'm already on probation. I'm begging you. Don't call the cops on me. In a hurry, she left and rushed back to the room she was actually staying in. We changed the sheets on the bed she had slept in, and everything seemed to return to normal. However, throughout her stay, whenever she saw me, she would shoot me an icy glare, to which I would simply roll my eyes. Eventually, she ended up getting evicted, and I could hear all the commotion from the side of the complex where she was staying. Out of curiosity, I decided to take a peek and saw her physically fighting with one of the officers. When she saw me, she started running towards me, and I quickly retreated into my room. Needless to say, she ended up back in jail. I don't know the details of what she was on probation for, and it's none of my business, but I genuinely hope she got the help she desperately needed. This might sound exaggerated, and my memory can be a bit hazy, but I've pieced together what I could remember. Regardless, it was a truly crazy and unsettling experience. The moral of the story, the phrase stranger danger exists for a reason. Please be cautious out there, people. Now, 
shifting to another incident that happened when I was 13. I'm 19 now, and it still gives me the creeps to this day. I was at a hotel with my older sister, who was 15 at the time, and my mom. We were out of town visiting relatives during the summer when school was out. My sister and I went to the pool room with our four cousins to hang out while our moms had a girl's night out. After about two hours in the pool, we showered in the pool area and dried off. My sister and cousins went back to our room, but I told them I'd catch up with them later because I had something else to do first. Afterward, we all got dressed and I went to the vending machine to get us some snacks and sodas with my allowance. As I was under the snack machine, there was an older. When I was 19, I had a heated argument with my girlfriend. It centered around her, accusing me of staring at another girl's butt while we were shopping at the mall. I insisted that I wasn't, explaining that I was just stretching my neck, but she wasn't buying it. Frustrated, I told her she could have the house to herself for the night, and I decided to stay at a hotel. I quickly packed my suitcase, got into my car, and drove to the hotel I had in mind. Upon arrival, I checked in and made my way up to my room on the third floor. The room had a door that provided a view into the pool area on the other side. As it got late, I decided to watch some TV for a while before heading to bed. After about three hours of watching TV, I turned it off and went to sleep. However, my peaceful night took a disturbing turn when I was abruptly awakened at around 4.30 in the morning by knocking sounds coming from the door facing the pool area. The curtains were drawn, so I couldn't see who was outside. I turned on a table lamp and noticed a shadowy figure standing by that door. As the figure slowly raised its arm, I saw the glint of a knife. Without hesitation, I leaped out of bed, slipped on my shoes, grabbed my hoodie, phone, wallet, car keys, and room key, and made a quick exit, using the other door to my room. I didn't even have time to put on my pants. I ran down three flights of stairs and out the front door in my hoodie shoes, and underwear. I didn't return to my own house, as my girlfriend was there. Instead, I drove for miles, desperate to put distance between myself and the hotel. After about 45 minutes of driving, I mustered the courage to return to the hotel. I went back inside and back to my room. To my relief, the lamp was still on, but the shadowy figure from before had disappeared. Open the door, or I'm going to shoot. My heart was pounding as I lay there in fear. I grabbed my phone and dialed 911, whispering my location and the situation to the operator. She assured me that the police were on their way. Meanwhile, the chaos continued outside my room. I could hear the commotion, more shouting, and additional gunshots. It was a terrifying ordeal, and I could hardly breathe as I awaited the arrival of the police. Within what felt like an eternity, but was probably only a few minutes, the sound of sirens grew closer. The police had arrived, the gunman was apprehended, and the situation was brought under control. Once the police had secured the area, the girl at the front desk called my room inform me that it was safe to come out. I stepped out cautiously and saw the aftermath of the chaos. It turned out that the gunman had some personal issues with another guest at the hotel and had come armed with a gun to confront them. Thankfully, no one was injured during the incident, but it was a nightmarish experience I would never forget. The police questioned witnesses, including me, and gathered evidence for their investigation. After everything had settled down, I decided to check out of the hotel early the next morning. I couldn't bear to stay there any longer after what had happened. 
I went back to my house, where my older brother had fixed the water heater. I was relieved that I was safe, but the trauma of that night stayed with me. It served as a stark reminder of how quickly a peaceful evening can turn into a nightmare. The situation continued to escalate as the man outside my door kept pounding on it, threatening to break it down and shoot me if I didn't let him in. My heart raced, and I was in a state of sheer terror. I was crying and so scared that I ended up soiling myself. It was an embarrassing and horrifying moment. I had no choice but to lie in my bed in my soiled pants, waiting for the all clear. The man eventually moved on to another door and forcibly broke into that room. I heard a woman screaming from that room and my heart sank. It became apparent that the man had kidnapped a little girl from that room and the woman was frantically demanding her daughter's return. Then I heard a commanding voice outside shouting, drop the gun and let the girl go. The cops are here. It was a relief to know that the police had arrived. They managed to arrest the man and reunite the girl with her mother. Once the all clear was given, I rushed to the bathroom to freshen up and changed into clean clothes. I discarded my soiled clothes, and while I was still shaken, I felt immense relief that the man had been taken into custody by the police. After a thorough investigation, the police explained that when those two gunshots went off, the man who had the gun Thank you for taking the time to listen to these stories. I hope you found them engaging and, in some cases, thought-provoking. If you ever have your own stories to share, please don't hesitate to submit them on southerncannibal.com. Have a good night, everyone, and always remember to stay curious and open to the stories that life has to offer.